Welcome everybody to the meeting of the whole April 7th, 2020. Uh, because of the current health pandemic, in order to comply with the governor's directive to stay at home, stay safe, and the public health order issued by the county health department and county mayor, we've determined that an in-person meeting including attendance by the public and the council is not particular and prudent or practical and prudent. Therefore, the meeting will be held remotely through electronic meetings. This is the first entirely remote electronic meeting we have held. Each person is participating from a separate location. We're totally dependent upon the internet and technology to broadcast the meeting. It's important for us to ensure that the public has the opportunity to view the proceedings. However, there could be a malfunction that is totally out of our control. We don't expect any issues, but we want to be aware of the possibility. If you'd like to submit a citizen's comment or public hearing comments, please email to city.council at murray.utah.gov. It should be less than three minutes, including your name, your contact information, and they, they will be read into the record. All council members are present. We ask each one to say hello individually so the public may see them and our screen. So everybody say hello, Brett. Hello. Diane. Hello. Kat. Hello. Rosalba. Hello. <laughs> All right, we'll continue. Uh, approval of the minutes. Approval of the minutes, uh, Committee of the Whole, February 4th, 2020, and Committee of the Whole, February 18th, 2020. Do I have a motion? Gail, do you want to take them together? Okay. Yeah, please. Okay, I'll move to approve the minutes for the Committee of the Whole February 4th and February 18th, 2020. All second. Okay, Jennifer, will you take the roll? Ms. Dominguez? Aye. Ms. Turner? Aye. Mr. House? Aye. Ms. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Okay, proposed Board of Appeals revision, Murray Code Section 2.36, Melinda and Steve Reed. Okay, let's see. I Hopefully everybody can see the screen. I actually don't have Steve Reed here with me tonight, but we have reviewed these changes. We've worked with the city attorney's office and Bill, or Steve Reed, who's the building official. What we're presenting to this council for possible approval tonight is that we change the membership number for the Board of Appeals from five members to three members. This will allow us to have an easier time finding members to participate with the Board of Appeals. They have to have a specialty, some type of experience in construction or building code knowledge. So it can get tricky to find members who fit that um, experience background and who are willing to serve. It's also difficult because the Board of Appeals doesn't have a need to meet very frequently, which is good because that shows our building inspector is doing a good job and calling, um, making judgment calls according to code so they're not being appealed very frequently, but we need to have a functioning Board of Appeals and with the number of members being reduced from five to three, we feel like that will be easier for us to find members to serve and to track the um, track and hold meetings. So you can see on the screen, we just have a couple of very minor changes proposed. The one that they go from three to five members, or from five to three members, and um, really about the only change we're proposing. The terms will stay the same. All of the members would still be appointed uh, by the mayor, but with the advice and consent of the city council. Are there any questions for me? Yes. Yes. Who wants to go first, Diane? Uh, yeah, I just, I have a question about, are these appointments, since there are five, 
are these appointments by district or how how do you choose them and how do you solicit for them how do you how do you actually get these counts or these members thank you council member turner so these are not terms um, or memberships that are, that are tied to any district it's okay. the expertise and the knowledge that we're looking for so what what we have been doing right now because we are looking for members is um, the the building official has been contacting those that he knows either they're a contractor construction worker or even a retired code or building inspector and has been putting feelers out there to find um, those that live and reside within Murray and would be interested in serving and then we send the name of interested parties to the mayor's office to be considered to appointment on the board. And then just as we do with any other uh, members like from the planning commission or the design review committee, we meet with um, mayor's office and then we bring that to you for recommendation or the mayor's recommendation to you for advice and consent. So you'll see in the next um, couple of meetings, we'll be bringing forward some names to appoint to the board of appeals. Um, Diane, do you have any other questions? No, just just a further statement, just to you know, if if um, if you wanted to, you might be able to contact council, and we might know who would also you know be good for that for that committee because we tend to know a lot of people in our in our city. So it might be a good idea if you let us know as well. We might we could be a resource for that. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. My question is, who is who currently sits on the board? So that's um, part of the reason why, why we're bringing this to you for a change. We really don't have a functioning board at this moment. The last appointments that were made, um, terms have either expired or people have uh, chosen or they're not able to participate anymore. So we really don't have a functioning board at all right now. How many members or participants do we have now? So the code calls for five. I think that we actually I don't think we have any right now. Okay. And is there like other than you know meeting um, is there any other reasons why this would go why we would why we would want to go down to three? Yeah, just given the nature of, again, trying to find expertise, um, those willing to serve, it's just difficult to maintain a board. Um, the board have the requirement of meeting annually, like, uh, like all the other boards, to meet the requirements of the Open and Public Meetings Act and basically provide them the training. But mm -hmm. if we've done that, um, we haven't had a board of appeals for several years, so it gets really hard to keep interested when you really don't have a need for a committee to meet so we, we, that five to three would just be easier for us to keep an interest level um, on on having people maintain again like a lot of people who want to get involved and serve they um, get a little bit disillusioned when they're not really able to you know treat a student and be productive with the role that they've been appointed to. And so we felt like the fewer numbers that we would have with that would eliminate some of those challenges that we faced. Okay, thank you. Dale Greg raised his hand. Me? Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna echo what Melinda had said. I know that from my experience that they have, it, uh, I don't want to use the term bored, but I'm going to that they've been bored because there's just not a lot going on when we we change the way we did this instead of it being a committee and individuals that uh, I think it's a good idea uh, solely because of what you said, Melinda, that it, all of a sudden people aren't as interested when they're not able to actually serve often. And, and I don't think they were doing you, you like you said, there wasn't a lot going on. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, so I, I just have two two questions here. The first is some boards have members that have to live in the um, in the city boundaries, and then a couple can be 
um, members of the greater community outside of Murray. Has that been um, considered or a piece of the makeup of this board in the past at all to try and bring in more people? Yes, we did have that discussion internally. Uh, and the consensus was that rather than try and bring people outside the city boundaries and residents um, for non-residents in, that we would prefer to keep the investment of residents who live in Murray City um, and reduce the number of the membership requirements. So um, okay. the alternative would have been that we would keep it at five and expand to individuals who may not live within the city boundaries. But we might uh, keep them within the city. My one other question was, um, are there concerns about um, getting a quorum with a smaller number of um, that being um, more difficult to get at one meeting? So that's, that's a good question too, but there's uh, the nature of the board, there's really not a set time or date required to have them assemble. It's kind of more on an as needed basis. So we would just need to set up a meeting within a certain amount of time and we feel like we should be able to get something scheduled with the three members. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Dale, I have another question. Okay, Diane. Um, Melinda, I'm wondering, what is the best practice? What, what, are other, what do other cities do? So there's, there's several options. Um, I think, I mean, it, it's tough to say. I did do kind of a sampling of a few cities. Uh, some cities are actually using the hearing officers that are used for planning and zoning appeals and variance and for the variances that get submitted. Um, we discussed that with Steve Reed, the building official, and his preference was to go with a group, the appeals or the board of appeals who have an expertise in code knowledge or construction. He just felt more, more comfortable since it would be his judgment call or his interpretation of the code that would be um, appealed. He wanted to have folks that would have a particular set of knowledge base. And so that's one option that other cities have used. The state of Utah also has an appeal board that can be used as default if a city does not have a board set up, but that's not a preferred method either. The state recommended to us that we just figure out our own method for setting up a board. So those are kind of a couple of um, options that other cities are doing. Um, most cities, when I sampled them, it's they have the same struggles that we do. Uh, like I, I recall, um, okay, I want to say it was Enix City. You know, they've had one appeal in eight years. Um, I think Steve Reed, the building official, has recalled in his 13 years here two different appeals that have come through. So it's not something that happens very or very frequently. Um, but the the primary concern of Steve as the building official was that he be able to kind of have a board who can speak the same language as to what the appeal of the code would be. Right. Okay, but I was wondering about um, best practice in terms of the numbers. Do are most boards five or three or, or are you aware of um, I did not. I did not sample that in my in my question um, out to the. I just asked if they did an alternate to the board of appeals. So I don't. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Dale? Yeah. I just want to make a statement that I appreciate that we are keeping it inside the city. I think that's important. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I, I agree. We don't want the state to do this. All due respect to the state, uh, but it's best to keep it here. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Melinda. You're welcome. Thank you. You bet.
All right, announcements, Jan. Let me just mention one thing. Um, I have been in touch with my contact at the Murray School District, and she is checking with um, Jennifer Covington and the board members to see if they have any interest in doing a Zoom meeting later this month. I haven't heard back yet, but I'll keep you informed. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Jan. If there isn't anything else, this meeting's adjourned. All right. Okay, are we ready to start the budget and finance committee meeting? We are. We go right ahead. Okay. All right. So this is uh, the budget and finance committee meeting for the municipal council. Uh, for April 7th, 2020, and we just have one issue, and that's approval of minutes. Are there any changes or questions uh, for the mid-year budget review for fiscal year 2019-2020 for February 4th, 2020? Diane, if I... If yes. I could just make one comment, um, there were a couple of corrections that Rosalba brought to our attention and Patty has made those already. Okay. All right. Um, any others? Okay. Hearing none, then um, could I get a motion? I'll make a motion. My own. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, mid-year budget review, fiscal year 2019-2020, February 4th, 2020. And I'll second. Okay. Um, all right, I guess we need to do a roll then, Jennifer. Mr. Hells? Aye. Ms. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. Dominguez? Ms. Dominguez? Aye. Ms. Turner? Aye. Okay, that's it. Um, we are adjourned. Okay, we'll move on. Let's see here. All right, we are now officially in our council meeting. Um, I just want to welcome everyone to our first online meeting. We appreciate everyone watching from the comfort of your homes. Um, <clears throat> we hope you are safe and healthy, of course. So I just want to start you section I'm not hearing this I'm not hearing you. Council at Can you not? Okay. Give me one second. It might just be me. Is it just me? No, no. I could Hello. Can you guys hear me now? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Better. Okay. All right. Sorry guys. I don't know what happened there. It's my tie. All right, so I just wanna welcome everyone to the first city council meeting online. We appreciate everyone watching from the comfort of your homes or where you are streaming today. We hope that you are safe and healthy, of course. Um, before we get started, I wanted to remind everyone that you can submit your comments to us by email at city.council at murray.utah.gov. Again, that's city dot council at murray dot utah dot gov um, during the citizen comment section for the public <clears throat> you can we will go ahead and read your comments jan will read them and then um, we will share them as well so put in the email please include the following your name and contact information and keep it to three minutes which is approximately 390 words to 400 words, if you want to know. Um, all right, any other questions about that? Also, I will remind everyone, please mute yourselves as it does 
bring a lot of echo in. That's probably why we can't hear each other. Um, but we are going to go ahead and move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. So we will unmute ourselves again. Um, I, Matt and I convinced our daughter Eva to recite the pledge. So I'm going to go ahead and have her come in. All right, Eva. You're up. Yeah, just sit right there. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I pledge, oh, wait. pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag. To the flag. I of the United to the States of America. America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it, for which stands, it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, you can go upstairs now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Eva, for being brave and reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, moving forward. Again, I'm just going to remind everyone to mute themselves as there is an echo and it could be hard to hear each other. Um, so let's go ahead and move forward to approve the minutes. Does anyone have any corrections to the minutes from our previous council meeting on March 17th, 2020? All right, since nobody has any corrections, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move approval of the council minutes for March 17th, 2020. I'll second. Perfect. All right, Jennifer, can you call the roll for the vote? Sure. Ms. Turner? Aye. Mr. House? Aye. Ms. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. Dominguez? Aye. All right, moving forward to the next part of our agenda. Um, we would like to consider a joint resolution of the mayor and Municipal Council of Murray City, Utah, declaring Friday, May 1st, 2020, as Arbor Day, Matt Erklins and Mayor Camp will be presenting. I will now turn the time over to Mayor Camp. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, before uh, I read the, uh, the resolution, I wanna take just a second and recognize the Shade Tree and Beautification Commission uh, this is the 40th year that Murray City has had a, a Shade Tree and Beautification Commission. It was established in 1980, and it's a group of community volunteers that work under the direction of our city forester, who is currently uh, Matt Erklins. And uh, uh, Matt is here uh, online with us uh, this evening, and we'll ask him if he wants to make any comments when, when I get finished here. But the, the Shade Tree and uh, Commission, they judge the annual uh, beautification awards they judge the Arbor Day contest winners, uh, which uh, we will, which we had this year in the schools, but we just are not able to have our event to recognize them. And uh, and then they also assist in the annual tree lighting ceremony that's held at City Hall. And the members of our commission right now are Darren Bird, uh, Dr. Janice Evans, Janelle Nelson, Jim Hendrickson, and Judith Payne. And uh, we're very disappointed that we're not able to have our annual Arbor Day celebration this year in Murray Park. That's always such a fun and worthwhile event. Um, but we will look forward to its return uh, next year in 2021. So I will read the joint resolution of the mayor and municipal council uh, declaring Friday, May 1st as Murray Arbor Day. Whereas Arbor Day is observed throughout the nation and even throughout the world on April 24th, 2020, as trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas no exact value can be placed on a tree, as the true value is in the eyes of the beholder, as the psycho-emotional spiritual relationship between people and trees is far-reaching and complex. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil from wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen and provide habitat for wildlife, as well as provide fun, shade, cover, and even safety for us and other living creatures. And whereas in preparing for the future, Murray City is committed to managing the confined spaces along streets and near buildings, 
so we have a peaceful coexistence between trees, utilities, buildings, and people. And whereas Murray City's Shade Tree and Beautification Commission has its prime objective, the beautification of our city by promoting the planting and care of trees and vegetation, add beauty and value to our community, making it more enjoyable and desirable place to work, play and live. As a Tree City USA now for 43 years, we are reminded that Murray, city, Murray is a city without equal. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and the municipal council of Murray City do hereby declare Friday, May 1st, 2020 as Murray Arbor Day and urge all citizens to support uh, efforts to protect our trees and woodlands to plant trees that will gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations while beautifying our city. And if uh, passed and approved and adopted, it will be uh, by the Mayor and Murray Council of Murray City, Utah, this seventh day of April, 2020. That is the resolution. Do you want to vote on it, uh, Council, before, uh, before we ask Matt to say a few words, or would you like to hear from Matt? My instructions are to vote and then have hear from him. <laughs> Is that okay, everyone? All right. Great. Okay, so can I get a motion to for this? I'll do it. I'll move that we approve a joint resolution of the mayor and municipal council of Murray City, Utah, declaring Friday, May 1st, 2020, as Murray Arbor Day. I'll second. Thank you. Jennifer, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Turner? Aye. Mr. House? Aye. Ms. Martinez? I just want to say that I think being a Tree City USA is one of the neatest things about Murray and how trees really up the value of, you know, homes in the neighborhood and just quality of life. And so I just think it's something really special that the city's always valued. Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. Dominguez? Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, All right. Matt, you um, words? I'd like to speak. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, is it my turn? Do I have a second just to say a few words? Yes, it is your so, turn. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Um, yeah, I think uh, the Mayor's kind of touched on how uh, the, the Shade Tree uh, Commission it, and, um, and myself are, you know, disappointed that we're not holding the uh, Arbor Day celebration this year. However, we do still plan on planting a tree in honor of Arbor Day. Um, uh, so yeah, that's something we always look forward to is planting trees throughout the city and continue on with the uh, Tree City USA um, awards. We, uh, we are the longest uh, running Tree City USA um, city in, uh, in the state and we, we will uh, continue to uh, push the envelope on that. So uh, that's about all I had to say. If anyone has any questions, I'd, I'd love to answer them. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to ask each council member one by one if they have any comments. Kat, do you have anything else to add? All right. Dale? Dale, would you like to say anything? I can't see you. Sorry. First, I better on you. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, all right. Diane? Unmute yourself, Diane. Sorry. Jan, can you unmute Diane? Okay, Sorry about I'm... that. <laughs> okay, hey, Diane. All right. Anyway, thank you for your service. And I think it's wonderful that we're part of the Free City USA. I love that about, about Murray as well. So thank you. All right, Brett. Just a big thanks, uh, Matt and Mayor and everyone. Uh, it's an awesome program, awesome uh, thing. As, as Kat said, we've got two trees planted out front from uh, Murray City, and we love them. 
All right. And I would just like to say, I look forward, even though we can't share this moment together, I really look forward to sharing it online somehow through photos. Um, that way we can share it amongst residents and keeping each other informed that way. So thank you so much, Matt. And thank you, Mayor, for this. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we are going to move forward to citizen comments. Um, Jan has collected citizen comments at city.council at murray.utah.org. Comments are limited to less than three minutes, which is approximately 390 words to 400 words a minute. Each resident has submitted their contact information to Jan um, to go on record. So Jan, I will let, I will let you take it away. Okay. Um, this first one was sent in on Saturday, March 28th, and it is from Corbin Whitaker, who lives in the na neighborhood of Wesley Road in District 3, and he says, my name is Corbin Whitaker, and I am working with my neighborhood to get that walking park in. How can I do my part to make sure this happens? That's all of that one. The second one was sent on Sunday, March 29th, and it is from Alan Bergeson. My name is Alan Bergeson. I live in the neighborhood of Wesley Road. There is an empty lot on Wesley Road at 5090 South. There is about five and a half acres of wetlands, trees, and animals, and would love to see this land preserved as a park for the community's use and enjoyment. Thank you for all you do. Please consider this request. Thanks. This one is, came in on Sunday, March 29th from Kevin Sullivan, addressed to Rosalba. My wife and I are constituents of yours living at 5268 Wesley Road. I am emailing you to support the proposition of Murray City creating a park on the vacant property between Wesley Road and the Country Club Estates Mobile Home Park neighborhood. I recognize that the property is currently privately owned has changed hands a number of times, and that developers are eager to maximize its profitability. I also recognize that doing so would increase Murray City's tax base. Developers have had difficulty creating a viable plan to build in that area. I believe Tanner Ditch running through the property has created some difficult engineering impediments. I would propose as an alternative that Murray purchase the land which may be possible soon because of current events impacting the value of property and retain the property as parkland. If you take some time from your day and visit that property, you will be pleasantly surprised by its rough natural beauty. Make sure you wear sturdy boots and pants. Once you enter the area, the first thing you'll notice is an unimpeded view of our beautiful Wasatch Front. Exploring through the vegetation, you will also likely stumble into deer and other wildlife. It's almost like a miniature wildlife refuge. A small walking path and maybe a pavilion for picnics are all that would be needed to allow almost anyone to enjoy its beauty. Currently, the nearest park for my neighborhood, Revere Drive, the trailer park in Cobble Creek Condominiums, is the grassy field at Twin Peaks Elementary School. I know it is heavily relied on for folks to relax as I live across the street from it. It's wonderful to have, but it's all we have, and it's still school property. Creating a walking natural scenic park in the wild property east of Wesley Road would be a blessing for everyone in the neighborhood and even further afield. The folks in the trailer park where many children and humble families live would have a lovely preserve where they can walk as families and learn about nature. If it's done right, the area would be a shining example to municipalities all over the country, illustrating our city's ability to find the perfect mix of business, residential, and recreational property. Because of its raw, natural state, I can even envision the area as the focus of nature study. The many children attending Twin Peaks could benefit from the learning experience the park could provide. Rosalba, I understand economic and developmental realities, but I hope you will take me up on my offer to go look at the property and entertain, even if briefly, the vision of preserving some of the very rare undeveloped land in our valley. 
Kevin Sullivan. The next one is from Susan Byers, and she sent in on Monday, March 30th. We want to preserve the wetlands and animals, deer, fox, and pheasant. On Wednesday, April 1st, from Jessica Sturm, I live in the neighborhood near Twin Peaks Elementary School, and there are plans to either build a neighborhood behind some of the houses here or a walking path. As an avid outdoor user, space user, I would urge you to build a walking path. This area is beautiful with a natural river, many huge mature trees, and gorgeous views of the mountains beyond. Something for the community at large would be very beneficial to all. The next one on Friday, April 3rd from Stephanie Howell. I understand that there is a possibility of a small park on Wesley Road. I think this would be a nice enhancement to the area. There is no other park in the area. Please consider this in your budget. And then um, from Bruce Dube, D-U-B-E, on April 6th. Good morning, and I hope this finds you healthy and well during these difficult times. It has come to my attention that the above PUD, and he refers to Spring Creek PUD, 5100 South Wesley Road, will have 15 houses, which will add 30 vehicles transiting Wesley Road and 60 more residents to this neighborhood. Wesley Road is already a busy access road for the neighborhood. And with that development, there will be construction traffic at first, then more traffic from new residents. That PUD will add an additional 37.5% houses north to south along Wesley Road. We currently enjoy a relatively quiet neighborhood and would like to keep it that way. The Spring Creek PUD will have a mini Olympia Hills impact on our neighborhood. I am opposed to that development and will contest its approval. Would not the interests of the neighborhood be better served if that site was made into a walking park and the wetlands were included into the design? And then he sent a second short um, email. I am writing to express my opposition to the proposed Spring Creek PUD on Wesley Road. If that Spring Creek PUD is abandoned due to uncertain economic com conditions, I propose the following. I recommend and hope that Murray City purchase that parcel and design and build their new Northeast Park at that location and also incorporate the surrounding open space and wetlands into that design. The next one was received today and it is from Ralph Wieben and it's regarding Murray Parkway Avenue and the Jordan River Parkway concerns. First, my sincere thank you to the Murray City Council and Mayor and your staff. I first got to know Murray City when I worked for 3M HIS and later when I moved here in 2014. I find Murray tends to find that rationale middle ground between the extreme, extremes, and I appreciate that. I write today as a self-confessed grouchy old retired guy that lives along the Jordan River Parkway. I have several issues, but the common thread is the Jordan River Parkway. The Jordan River Parkway is, thankfully, an underappreciated gem. As I said, I worked 13 years just up the road, and I think we had a picnic down there here once. Otherwise, I had no clue this beauty existed until I was fortunate to find a home along it. Now I cherish it and frankly demand that we as a community appreciate and preserve it for generations to come. My specific concerns boil down to use and enforcement. Murray Parkway Avenue is clearly posted 25 miles per hour. In addition to the many private vehicles I watch ignore the speed limit, why do I consistently see Murray Police Department, Murray Park vehicles and garbage trucks cruise it at well above 35. It would seem difficult to enforce a law when the enforcers do not honor it. As much as I despise these speed bumps, 
has Murray City considered a few well-placed speed bumps on this road? Or maybe one of the permanent flashing speed limit and your speed signs? Secondly, the signs clearly state that the Jordan River Parkway is a no vehicle area. Why then do I see Murray Police Department motorcycles and patrol cars drive it? In all my time living here, six years now, I have seen officers on foot less than five times. Why do I see Murray City Park vehicles cruise it? I am retired, but not an idiot. I worked, I served three years in the Army. My dad was a facilities guy for decades in the Air Force and later for a corporation. I have an understanding of maintenance and security concepts and realities. Security first. I love seeing Murray Police Department in the area. I just don't understand how one can say they patrol an area when it is done from inside a vehicle with windows up. You block sound and smell, not to mention the focus, then upon the various internal distractions like the radio, computer, phones, and pagers. Get out of the cars and walk. Not to abreast either. Now you are chatting. How about one on a, the paved path and one down by the river? Now you can see, hear, and smell what is happening. Cuts down on the options for nefarious individuals wanting to avoid you too. The motorcycle option is only slightly better. That helmet and sexy engine rumble do not allow for tactical hearing. Again, why not park the motorcycles and walk? I understand that you may be able to propel, patrol more square feet on or in a vehicle, but you are just checking the box. You did not patrol any of the area. Park vehicles, I realize they have work they are doing and need equipment. I am not suggesting they park by 5300 and carry their equipment to the work site but do they really have to drive the parkway from 5300 to Germania Pavilion? How about stay on the roads and maybe jump the curb where and when you need to or, to, or drive to the pavilion, then jump the curb or go green. Get a few flat tires, bikes and bike trailers. Simply asking that we as a city set a good example of respect and preserve the Jordan River Parkway for generations to come. Set a good example. Officers pedaling a bike can also hear, see, and smell more. Officers walking a community are healthier. Learn more and establish valuable community relationships. Now a separate but related concern. The increased use of battery-powered transportation. Again, the parkway is clearly labeled no motorized vehicles. Why then are we allowing the many battery-driven scooters, boards, and bikes? They are in fact motorized. I watch rude people all the time. People on conventional bikes and boards can be rude. But when you are moving more rapidly and silently, it seems even easier to be rude. There are old and young, able-bodied and not so able-bodied walkers out there. Why are they put in jeopardy by city motorcycles, cars, trucks, and individuals traveling rapidly on motorized vehicles? I do not see a speed limit resolving this situation. Who is going to enforce said limit? We lack the person power to properly enforce the speed limits on the roads. I had hoped to come speak to the council and mayor, but understand you are doing these now virtually. Good move. Stay safe and go wash your hands. Concerned retiree, Ralph Weaven. And that concludes the citizen comments for the evening. All right, thank you, Jan. Um, and I just wanna say thank you neighbors for, for your, all your comments. We will be in touch with you um, about all these concerns. And I've been in touch with all the neighbors from Wesley and they are responding to the master plan and, and thought that that was happening this evening. So that's why they were rallying up together. Um, and, and, you know, nobody knows our community best than the people that live in them. So I really appreciate all of your, your comments and concerns and your voice. 
Um, moving forward, we're going to go ahead and move forward to public hearings. Um, the first item is we are considering considering a resolution approving the 2019 Municipal Wastewater Planning Program report. Um, Corey Wells and Ben Ford will be presenting. Are you guys ready? We are ready. Yep. All right. Go ahead. Take it away. Okay, so we're just here asking for the resolution uh, for the Municipal Wastewater Planning Program report that was uh, submitted to you guys in the Committee of the Whole on the 17th. Um, it's that same document. Nothing has changed from that. And we're asking for uh, resolution and approval on that document. All right. Um, would any of my fellow council members like to ask anything from that document? Um, let me ask one by one. Kat? Kat? Um, I'd just like to say thank you for so thoroughly explaining it to us at the Committee of the Whole meeting last time. Um, so I'm comfortable with it to move forward. Thank you. Okay, Dale? I'll echo what Kat said. Thank you. All right. How about Brett? Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Diane? I'm good. It was explained very thoroughly. Thank you for that. Mm. All right, perfect. It looks like we are... I'm good as well. Um, let's see. Jan, do we have any public comments for this? No, I haven't received any public comments. Okay, perfect. Um, so that concludes the public hearing part of this. And can I go ahead and get a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll move that okay. we uh, approve a resolution, approve, uh, excuse me, that we approve the resolution for the 2019 Municipal Water Waste Planning Program Report. I'll I'll second. Second. Perfect. <laughs> Jennifer, do you want to go ahead and take the roll? Ms. Turner? Aye. Mr. House? Aye. Ms. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. Dominguez? Aye. All right, looks like we're good to go, guys. Thank you so much for participating. Okay, thank you, and Mary. stay safe. All right, so moving forward um, to the second item on the agenda, and it's to consider a resolution approving the donation of in-kind services to the Navajo Tribal Utility Authority 2020 Light Up Navajo Initiative Project. And Jan, you will be presenting this. Yes, um, you are all familiar with this project and actually Blaine presented it about a month ago and you did approve that. We just need to hold the public hearing on the chance that our um, power department will be able to send some folks to the Navajo Nation for this project. And it is a proposal for the power department to send, um, it was originally two groups of people uh, linemen, journey line workers, and apprentices to the Navajo Nation to assist in constructing new power lines for the more than 15,000 homes that have never had electrical power. The city's cost to participate consists of in-kind donation of labor necessary for the project, a city power truck, and bucket truck. They would be working alongside um, from other cities and the hotel expense is to be covered by APPA. As I said, two dates were originally set. I think the first one has definitely been canceled. The second one may still happen. We're not sure at this point and um, just wanted to offer this as a public hearing for citizens to make any comments that they'd like to. Okay, um, do we have any citizen comments on this? I have not received any. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys one by one again, if you, council members, if you have any comments, questions, concerns. Kat? Um, I was just wondering, do we know if they're looking at rescheduling into the fall at all for this program? You know, the mayor might be able to answer that. I don't have any information on that. My understanding is at this point they are not, that there's a, a window uh, that they needed to accomplish this. 
but that's always subject to change. Thanks. Okay, Dale, do you have any? No, I think it's a great project. Brett? I love this project, so I'm all for it. Diane? What they said. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to add um, to this. I have been in communication with the Navajo Council and, um, and with the board from the Navajo Nation because they just put in an order that they are shutting the Navajo Nation down to essential workers and essential workers being medical um, personnel. So no one on the, no one could go on to the nation. Um, but the update I got today was that the initiative has been postponed and they will be in contact with um, the project, the heads of the project and cities. I just got this right before the meeting and they had contacted me about it because they did see it on the, on the agenda um, because of the concern and the high risk of the nation being, there's a high number of the population already cut, that have contracted COVID-19 and um, they want to eliminate people coming outside of, from, in, onto the nation, I should say. Hello, Salva. Mm -hmm. I just received one citizen comment. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to read it. Yes, that would be great. Okay, and it says, I support the light up Navajo resolution as a resident of Murray. However, is the council communicating with the Navajo Nation and NTUA regarding the status of this project? I have family residing in San Juan County and the Navajo Nation is dealing with a state of emergency and a disproportionate amount of Navajo Nation members testing positive for COVID-19. I would not want to unintentionally put the Navajo Nation in harm by potentially exposing them to the coronavirus by any member of our crew who is asymptomatic. And this came from Samantha Eldridge of Murray. So I think you probably answered that with your comments. Yes. Um, and I just, I really want to say this project is amazing and have grown up in rural areas my whole life um, as a child. It's, it's, it's pretty fascinating to see something like this happening within our city and that the power department and that we really provide crews for the, for this program. So I look, I really look forward um, in seeing this move forward in the future. Anyone else have any comments, mayor? Thank you. I just uh, wanted to uh, address the comment uh, about communication with the Navajo Nation and the Navajo uh, utility. Of course, uh, all of our communications are going through the uh, APPA, and uh, certainly those uh, communications are taking place. So uh, that uh, person that comment on that can rest assured that they are. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I just, I have a personal connection with some of the council members from the Navajo Nation, and he had texted me about that specifically. So I, just to clarify that, thank you so much. All right, do we have any other, do, should we go ahead and with, move on with the vote? Would we update, Jan, would we, uh, or even GL, would we update the, the dates on resolution in the future? Yes. Okay, so we could still move forward with the vote, GL? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for a motion. Anybody wanna? I'll make a motion that we approve a resolution of the donation of in-kind service to the Navajo Tribal Utility Authority 2020 Light Up Navajo Project. I'll second that. Oh, go ahead, Diane. <laughs> okay, do we have any other further discussions? Okay, and um, let's see. And Jennifer, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Turner? Aye. Mr. Hells? Aye. Ms. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. Dominguez? Aye.
Of course, as I mute myself, I apologize. All right, so we're gonna move on to the business items of the agenda. Um, the next item is we will be considering a resolution of, Murray, of the Murray City Municipal Council approving a restated interlocal agreement between Murray City Corporation and the Salt Lake County for the lease of a park and ride station and allowing for county to for the county to install and maintain or cause to be installed and maintained a bicycle repair station. Danny, will you go ahead and present now? Yeah, hopefully uh, I've shared a screen um, as part of this agreement. So, so we've actually had an agreement with um, uh, Salt Lake County and UDOT and the canyons for many years uh, for the park and ride um, at the mouth of Big Cottonwood Canyon. Um, and just so that everybody knows, some of you may know that Murray City um, owns all of that property, including uh, additional prop property on the other side of Big Cottonwood Canyon Road above uh, Wasatch Boulevard. It's all part of our um, uh, worship watershed area that uh, that feeds our springs, which is below Wasatch Boulevard. So um, this agreement many years ago we entered into um, and, and Salt Lake County has been the uh, agency that is taking the lead in all of these things. Um, so what, what we're asking here is just uh, the the agreement had had reached its sunset date, but also uh, they had asked to add one more feature on that property, um, and that was just to to uh, install a uh, um, a bike repair station. There's about uh, two to three hundred bikes uh, on a single Saturday that goes by there. So if you ever go up there, that you'll you'll notice it it is really busy with bikes and. And there's probably about a thousand bikes a, a week uh, in the summer months that uh, that go by there. So uh, they've asked to, to put a repair station. And it's interesting because Salt Lake, Salt Lake County is going to actually put it there, but they've made a deal with uh, Cottonwood Heights uh, for the repair uh, or from to maintain that. So uh, we, we've um, so what we're asking here. Yeah, is to approve a resolution to uh, to approve this um, uh, restated agreement agreement, and then again adding uh, the repair or the bike repair station in that. Um, ho hopefully, I made that clear enough. Uh, if you have any questions, um, I, this agreement is really long. It's part of the old agreement, but this is basically the park and ride. Um, that exists up there now, and uh, they, they will put the the bike repair station up towards uh, where they have the uh, the bathrooms for that area. Any questions? Um, let me ask one by one, Danny. Um, sure. Kat, do you have any questions? Uh, no, it was really interesting reading the old agreement and seeing the city council members from. Like is it 1989? Yeah. Uh, that was that was kind of fun to go through. Um, who who runs the bike repair? Uh, is that staffed? Is that so? The bike repair station that uh, that is going to go there is is uh, uh, will be um, kind of manned by Cottonwood Heights City. They're going to maintain it. Salt Lake County's paying, uh, but okay. and, and uh, we're doing the agreement with them. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dale. Yeah, we can read the whole agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Later. No, I don't have I don't have any questions. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Diane. No questions. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Diane. <laughs> Brett. No questions. Just just a big thanks, uh, Danny, and everyone that's involved with this. Uh, I, I know a lot of people that will be very pleased with this. So thank you. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was a lot of information, but it was really interesting to see how old documents 
are coming, how they come forward and around again 20 years later. So it was really cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so let's see, Jan, is there any comments from the public on this? <laughs> I can't unmute you, Jan. There you go. Um, I don't have any public comments on this. This is just a regular new business item. Oh, that's right. I, I accidentally copy and pasted the wrong thing. Okay, so perfect. Let's go ahead and get a motion on this. I'll move to make a motion that we uh, approve a resolution for the Murray City Municipal Council approving a restate, uh, restated interlocal agreement between Murray City Corporation City and Salt Lake County, the county, for the lease of a park and ride station and allowing for the county to install and maintain or cause to be installed and maintain a bicycle repair station. I'll second. Perfect. All right, Jennifer, will you call the roll? Ms. Turner. Aye. Mr. House. Aye. Ms. Martinez. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Ms. Dominguez. Aye. All right, perfect. Thank you, Danny. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so the second item to <clears throat> our business is going to be, we are going to consider a resolution expressing support for Murray Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, Dale Cox, Dale will be presenting and Je go ahead, Dale. <laughs> go ahead, say his name. Joseph Silver Sweet. We sweet, right? You know? you go, the trick is to go for it because nobody else knows how to pronounce it either. So as long as you're <laughs> confident, everybody, everybody but me will think you got it right. Perfect. I got it right. <laughs> All right. Joseph reached out to the uh, myself, the council, and the city uh, on putting together a task force to explore and uh, help local businesses in Murray. And we have a resolution, I'll read it, and then I'll turn it over to Joseph. A resolution expressing support for the Murray Area Chamber of Commerce. Whereas the Murray Area Chamber of Commerce, the chamber, has been serving the greater Murray area since 1948. And whereas the mission of the chamber is to promote and support the positive business environment for the Murray area. And whereas the chamber, is also dedicated to helping businesses grow, be informed and advocate for the better of the community. And whereas the coronavirus pandemic, specifically involving COVID-19 virus, has affected the world, nation, state, and city in areas of both public health and economy. And whereas for both the global and local perspective, there are there are expected to be negative economic impacts due to the pandemic. And whereas the chamber as part of the mission, as part of its mission, has been evaluating the economic impact of the pandemic situation and believes the impact will be a dramatic. And whereas the chamber is seeking the help, help to evaluate that impact on working citizens, local businesses, and government revenue, and generally help the Murray area economy to weather the difficulties caused by the result of the pandemic. And whereas the chamber is creating its own economic task force in order to develop resources, policies, proposals, and other tools to help confront the economic damage of the pandemic, including social isolation, quarantine, shelter in place and shelter in place orders and whereas the city is concerned about the long-term health welfare and well-being of its citizens and businesses and whereas the city wants to encourage private and public organizations and citizens alike to take which initiatives to approve their economic well-being and the economic conditions of Mur the murray area and whereas the city wants to express its support of the chamber for a proactive approach to assist the economic well-being of Murray area citizens and businesses. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Murray City Municipal Council that it commends and supports the proactive approach of the Murray Area Chamber of Commerce in developing resources 
to alleviate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on Murray City and community. And I want to thank Kat for volunteering to sit on this as well. Joseph? Council members, Mayor Camp and the city officials, thanks you all for, for your time tonight and your leadership. It's an unprecedented time in, in American history and, and certainly in Murray's history. Uh, we've been getting a lot of good news lately. Uh, Utah's staying ahead of early projections. Stay home, stay safe seems to be working. And that has to, social distancing is saving lives. That has to continue to be the priority. But, but those efforts come with an economic cost that's described in the resolution. It's, it's the cost of saving lives. Murray's business community is happy to pay it. Um, every time those projection numbers go down, I, I think that's a, that's a real opportunity to rejoice. Uh, but the city government and the people of Murray do depend on, on thriving local commerce. So when we come out of the shutdown, we need the local economy to be ready to, to spring into action, to create jobs quickly, and to drive the local retail activity that Murray depends on for their operating budget. And, and so to that end, the Murray Area Chamber of Commerce is creating the Murray Area Economic Recovery Task Force, which is a temporary ad hoc committee going to gather together local business leaders, local government officials, community leaders, and other essential members of the community. And uh, as is in the resolution, we're asking for the council to support the effort and then to contribute a member of the council to our meetings uh, so that we're sure that your interests are represented, that we have somebody who's knowledgeable about the inner workings of, of the city, and that you can share the perspective of local government so that uh, your ideas are included. All right, do we, does anyone um, from the council, would, would you like to say anything, Kat? Um, yes, I just wanted to say I'm looking forward to sitting um, on this task force. Um, I'm grateful the council was asked to come to the table for this, and I'm looking forward to supporting the chamber and Murray businesses um, and just leaders in the community as we all try and um, be strategic and collaborative um, in this um, moving forward, um, but, and also echoing that this is a time where we do have to continue to stay safe and stay home for a while longer and Murray's doing really great and my dog just walked in and is pawing at me sorry <laughs> and, um, but so just thank you for your initiative with this Joseph and the council is um, behind you. Dale do you have any other comments? No reading that just about took it all out of me. <laughs> <laughs> all right Diane um, no, just I think it's a great idea, and thanks so much for involving us and inviting us to participate in that. I think it'll be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Brett? Thanks, Joseph. Uh, all on board, and, and a big thanks to Kat also for volunteering to do this. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. So Joseph, I have a few questions. First, I do really want to commend you in contacting us and, and really leading, taking leadership on this task force with the chamber. I think it's important and, and, and it's important to hear what the business, what businesses need and what's affecting them and how we can support them. Um, so my first question is who can join this task force? If I'm a resident, um, how can I join this task force? We're trying to keep the membership fairly small so that we can have uh, efficient conversations. Uh, but anybody who's really interested in it is certainly welcome to, uh, to, to s send a message to the Murray Chamber, um, to, to, to myself. I'll post my contact information on the chat here, the Zoom chat, so people can contact me. Uh, or they can contact uh, Stephanie, who is the uh, president and CEO of the Murray Chamber. Her, you can contact her directly through the Murray Chamber website. I uh, would certainly be happy to consider uh, any any interested members of the community. Uh, and, and I think it's important to state that we're, we're not just looking for business leaders here. I mean, certainly that's going to be part of, of this uh, this group. But but so many diverse interests are, are being represented by this economic recovery. We need to make sure that it's taking along uh, you know, not just business owners, but but uh, employees and, and residents so that they have the kinds of, uh, you know, commerce options that they're used to and that make Murray such a wonderful place to live, that all of those things are, are still here in town. Um, so we're certainly open to all sorts of people and, and from eclectic uh, backgrounds to, based on their, their commitment to Murray, their interest in, uh, in helping this economic rebound have happen as quickly as, as possible. 
So what I'm gathering is you guys kind of have kind of already identified those key people to be on the. Yeah, we have we have a we have a good group. I'm still adding a few people here and there. We're, we're yeah. trying to get uh, folks from the major industries, uh, healthcare industries, manufacturing, retail, professional services, uh, food services, restaurants. Um, as I, I don't need to tell, tell you, Councilman, yeah. uh, to make us your your uh, your own family life. I know was affected by this, but uh, yeah, food services heavily affected. As we want to make sure that those uh, those communities are in, as well as uh, construction. Real estate prices seem to be weathering things really well, but I, I wonder if there isn't going to be, um, you know, long-term consequences for for contractors and and uh, workers on properties. Uh, we're also inviting local government leaders, uh, certainly yourself, uh, hoping to get some members of the Midvale City Council to, uh, to to join, as well as somebody for the Midvale Mayor's Office, um, and try to identify a pair of uh, legislators, state legislators, a Democrat and a Republican. Who can who can report on what we're doing and also bring uh, information to us from uh, what I hope will be a fruitful special session coming up here in the in the next few weeks when uh, Governor Herbert calls on. All right, awesome. Um, any other discussion before we take a motion? Okay, can I go ahead and get a motion? I'll make the motion to adopt the resolution expressing support for the Murray Area Chamber of Commerce. Okay, perfect. Can I get a second? I'll second. All right. Okay. All right. Jennifer, do you want to go ahead and take the roll? Uh -huh. Ms. Turner? Aye. Mr. House? Aye. Ms. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. Dominguez? Aye. Okay, perfect, it has passed. All right, Mayor, um, we are going, I would like to welcome the mayor and have him give us a report. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Um, bear with me, I might just a little bit longer than usual, I have a few things to cover. But uh, first, first of all, I wanna make a comment about the, uh, uh, the resolution that you just passed. I wanna thank the uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, and you, Joseph, for taking on this initiative in behalf of our business community. Uh, even though this wasn't a joint resolution of the council and the mayor, I want you to know that as mayor, I ex also express my support of the chamber for its proactive uh, approach to assist the economic well-being of, of Murray area businesses. And I hope as you uh, do this, I hope you'll tap into the COVID-19 economic assistance programs that are available and will become available. I'm sure you're probably plugged into, into those, so, um, but, but thank you. I wanted to take just a minute and, uh, and uh, give an update on coronavirus. That's uh, something that we're dealing with every day, as you know. Uh, my staff and I monitor the uh, pandemic information uh, every day, and there are frequent changes and updates um, to the data and the recommendations. Since the last council meeting on March 17th, a lot has changed and uh, really a lot has remained the same. Uh, thanks to the diligent work of the city attorney and the human resources director, uh, a temporary COVID-19 emergency pandemic leave policy was drafted, uh, which I signed on March 24th. And this policy uh, pertained to the use of paid leave and prohibited work-related travel. On Friday, March 27th, Governor Herbert issued his Stay Safe, Stay Home directive. And on Sunday, immediately on the heels of that, uh, March 29th, Salt Lake County issued a public health order, which they called Salt Lake County Stay Safe, Stay Home. Uh, we acted immediately in uh, working with the applicable department heads to comply with that order. The order came out on Sunday. Uh, the Parks Department had all the playgrounds closed by Monday morning. Uh, I appreciate the quick and calm response by our city employees in complying with, with these orders. On uh, Wednesday, April 1st, we closed the remainder of our city facilities to the public, including City Hall. And uh, this was to ensure that social distancing uh, recommendations were maintained for 
uh, all of our employees and customers. Uh, only the cemetery office and the justice court remain open to the public right now in the city. The justice court is under the rules and authority of the AOC or the administrative office uh, of the courts. And so they are working under modified rules from the state. We've also posted information about the court and, uh, and can be found on our, our city website homepage. I think it's important to just to note that the government functions are considered essential service uh, in this uh, county order. And we've made it a priority for the city to continue providing these essential services to our citizens and businesses, even though the methods, the methods uh, have changed. Uh, we're encouraging online payments uh, or the use of the utility drop box. Uh, we're urging phone calls and remote meet meetings rather than in-person exchanges. Uh, we have continued to emphasize and re-emphasize the importance of social distancing while at work. And these measures appear to be effective so far. Uh, we've had a small number of employees self-quarantine for various reasons. And I would guess about a dozen of our employees have been tested for the virus. All the tests have come back negative, I'm, I'm happy to report. Also on uh, April 1st, uh, I issued three new emergency executive orders in response to COVID-19. The first order relates to city travel, uh, emergency paid sick leave, and family and medical leave. Uh, that order also repealed the temporary COVID-19 policy that was put into effect on March 24th. Uh, it superseded that order and uh, repealed it. The second order relates to the Open and Public Meetings Act during the COVID-19 outbreak and allows us to hold electronic remote public meetings like the one we're having now. That had to be done uh, through, through an order. Uh, because of the emergency declaration, we were able to do that. The third order addresses delinquent utility payments related to COVID-19. I have agreed to temporarily suspend utility shutoffs for delinquent accounts and to temporarily waive uh, late fees. Uh, this order uh, goes through, uh, through April and will be reevaluated on May 1st. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my staff and I monitor the pandemic information daily and we refer to reliable uh, resources to gain information such as the CDC, uh, the Utah Department of Health, and multiple websites that contain international data about the virus. Our city website has been updated with an emergency COVID-19 notice on the front page. You may have noticed the little red uh, button that lights up. Clicking on that notice takes viewers to a page that's devoted to COVID-19, where we provide city updates and links to other informative websites. Uh, there's no shortage of information out there, that's for sure. Additionally, we receive daily updates from Salt Lake County, and I think you get those too. And I participate in a weekly video conference with local mayors to discuss this crisis. Now, I think it's interesting to know that in a reversal of previous recommendations, the CDC now recommends wearing cloth face coverings or masks in public settings where other social distancing measures are difficult to maintain, such as in grocery stores and pharmacies, uh, and especially in areas of significant community-based transmission. So I have encouraged our department heads to make available as possible these types of masks to our employees to utilize uh, during the delivery of essential services where social distancing is difficult. Uh, some family members, employees are making masks to be utilized by our service providers. Uh, so we're keeping, we're keeping masks for our, our first responders and uh, now having uh, these uh, cloth masks available to other uh, service providers in our city. We'll continue to monitor and respond appropriately to the COVID-19 situation. And I want you to know that uh, all of the amphitheater productions for the month of June have now been canceled. Uh, these productions take, take months of preparation and rehearsals and, and they, can't, they can't happen right now. So because of the social distancing requirements, 
um, a decision is yet to be made for uh, any productions beyond June. Obviously, we'll see how that goes over the next the days and weeks. Also, our Transjordan landfill is closed to the public effective March 30th until further notice. Uh, our commercial haulers are still allowed, uh, but not residential. And uh, I hope this is a very temporary closure as I believe that the ability of our residents to utilize the landfill is an essential service, especially during the upcoming uh, spring cleanup period. So I'm hoping that they can uh, make arrangements there to, uh, to get that reopened to the public. Now, uh, not related to COVID-19, uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention tonight. Uh, we did have a power outage Sunday evening around 8.30 in the area of 5300 South and 7th West. Uh, that impacted about 150 customers. The power was out for about an hour for most of the customers, uh, about an hour and a half for 12 customers. Um, and it was caused by a transformer that had been leaking for apparently for some time and had been undetected until it finally failed. So uh, it caused the outage. We really appreciate the timely response of our power department and to have the, the power back on to most of the customers in an hour is, is outstanding. Uh, our, uh, our fire department has finally taken occupancy of the new headquarters fire station, uh, although there are still a few punch list items to be finished to, by the contractor. Uh, it is a magnificent facility and it'll serve our city well for many, many years. And we're all looking forward to the time when after this pandemic is over that uh, we can have a public open house uh, for uh, for that facility. And finally, uh, the library, even though the library is, uh, the building is closed, the library continues to provide services, including story time, which is uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11, 15 a.m. And uh, your children uh, or grandchildren can tune in uh, with Facebook Live to enjoy uh, a story read by one of our library staff. Uh, the, the first one they did last uh, week was they had 90 views, so uh, at least 90 people, and who knows how many more, but 90 views hit that. So uh, we consider that to be a success and a good use of the library while, while it's closed. So that's, uh, that's my report. So do you have questions I can answer? All right, I'll ask one by one, Mayor. Um, okay. Kat, do you have any questions? Um, no, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. Um, Dale? No, I'm good. All right. Diane? No. Okay. Brett? No, oh, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I had a question, Mayor, and this is just um, with a shared space that we have with the police department and how they're helping to prevent the spread of COVID-19 if they come in contact with patients or people in the community and to be able to continue to protect our staff who are working in City Hall. So if I understand your question, are you talking about your, the staff in City Hall or are you talking about the officers? Well, I'm talking about the officers and using shared doors and walkways and facilities um, with our staff who are still working at City Hall okay. um, and, and just kind of protecting our staff Okay, good question. From uh, from any from any possibility. Uh -huh. Okay. Go ahead. I think you're you froze up there for a second. So. <laughs> no, yeah, that was it. <laughs> okay, um, that's that's a good question, and uh, Chief Burnett has been uh, very proactive in uh, in giving instruction to the officers. Uh, they're not coming in for briefings. They're doing them in the parking lot. In fact, you may have seen, you may see some of the officers in the parking lot where they can distance and uh, take care of these um, these briefings in that way. Uh, so he's having them come into City Hall uh, a lot less. Uh, they're doing a lot more uh, wiping down the, uh, the surfaces uh, when they do have to come in. He's also... Um, He's also uh, having them clean their patrol cars uh, more frequently. Uh, and in fact, it uh, looks like we're going to be able to utilize, a, uh, I'll call it a fumigation for lack of a better term, but it's a, it's a uh, sanitizer uh, 
company that does this professionally. They can sit, they can sanitize patrol, the patrol cars, and uh, they've offered to do this uh, for us at no charge. So uh, those are the kind of things that, that are being done uh, to uh, to help protect uh, the employees in City Hall. Along with, uh, he is also um, keeping them at the uh, minimum six feet apart. Uh, uh, he's given instructions. In fact, we've given instructions to all of our uh, employees, but he's given specific instructions for the officers when they come in to not uh, to not engage with uh, the other employees in here, not to stop and talk with them or, or whatever. So those are the kind of things that are, that are in, not just for the police, but for also for our uh, all of our employees. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Rosala, do you mind if I uh, ask a question now? Sure, go ahead. I'm sorry I wasn't ready when you called on me. <laughs> I was uh, taking notes as the mayor spoke and I needed to sort of uh, regroup on that. First, I wanna say, Mayor, thank you um, for those uh, emergency orders um, for our city employees, um, for their sick leave and family leave. Um, I think those are so important. So thank you for doing that. And I just wanted to um, share my support. Thank you for um, suspending the utility shutoffs and um, and the fees for this time. So just I wanted to just share support for that. Um, so thank you. And my question is, um, you mentioned the masks, and that's what I was trying to remember. That now we're supposed to be ma making masks. We just uh, got our fabric dug out from the closet ourselves so that we can um, make some for our family. Um, is there any communication or added training going on for our police officers in um, seeing people in all sorts of different masks um, in stores um, just to make sure that a situation isn't escalated because something looks alarming in what is now our new normal. Uh, when you say, uh, is there training, are you talking about training of our, our officers or are you talking about an out community? I'm not sure. What I'm talking mean. about our officers specifically. Um, because we're sort of um, taught, you know, if you're wearing a bandana or you're wearing a mask over your face, that that's typically someone that would be red flagged probably as a person of concern by an officer for good reason. But now that that's something we're also supposed to wear, they're not all going to look medical as we're all haphazardly making them. And so I just want to make sure that all of our officers are aware of that recommendation and to treat individuals they see with different masks, you know, with that understanding. Sure, uh, and we want that as well. And this is just a new, uh, this this uh, recommendation we just uh, discussed this morning at uh, at our department head meeting and, uh, and I'm rolling this out across the city just as of today. So this is this is new uh, and, uh, but yes, uh, Chief Burnett is is very well aware of, of those uh, kinds of concerns. So those briefings will take place. Thank you. Good question. By the way, this is my, uh, I believe this is my fifth Zoom meeting today. <laughs> so. Okay, sorry. Can you guys hear me? Okay, good. So thank you, Mayor. And I did, and I did want to echo what Kat said about utilities. I, yeah. you know, um, had a major concerns from citizens about that. So I really do appreciate that. And, you know, we, Movie, it's every day, every day it's evolving. We don't know what's happening exactly. So I really appreciate that, Mayor. Um, one last question I do have is, are all, all buildings closed down? Is economic development also closed or are they meeting with the public still? And are we protecting them? Yes, all of the buildings are closed to the public except uh, the two that I mentioned. But the way we're dealing with business there is that uh, they can uh, they can make an appointment, or we have a, a, a large drop box out in front of the building. They can drop plans off, uh, and then they can uh, do a lot of it uh, uh, over the phone or Zoom. They do they will have to come in in some cases, uh, but we're asking them to make appointments to do so, and then keep the social distance uh, recommendations there. So, uh, so that uh, we have two departments in that building, uh, community development and public works, and they're both uh, they're both closed to the public without an appointment. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Does anybody else from the council have anything to say? Yeah, if I mind, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, 
Rosalba, you did a great job. Mayor, I appreciate what you're doing for both the city and the employees. Jan, thanks for setting this up. We went off without a hitch. Of course, we still got a few seconds left, but so far, it's it's worked great for our first uh, Zoom council meeting. Congratulations, everybody. Yes, we survived. Thank you guys so much. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that is watching. We really appreciate it. And please let us know if you have any comments, concerns in the future and keep, um, you know, stay informed and we will make sure you're informed for the next meeting as well. Thank you. And with that, I adjourn our meeting. Thank you so much.